Good morning and welcome to a great summer Saturday of sport which offers something for everyone. It all starts here with the Test Match and will be live for the start of the third day's play at Edgbaston in about 15 minutes time. First though, it's Cricket Focus. And we begin with the first test. A great start by England, a stirring comeback from India, and then a brave last stand. All ingredients for an entertaining two days at Edgbaston. That's got him, that's a good catch. My Glatherton in the gully. Done him beautifully. Dominic Cork has got through and has removed India's finest batsman. Beautifully bold. That'll do nicely. Nasser Hussain has his maiden test match hundred. Well, blue skies over Edgbaston again this morning and another fine day is forecast, so hopefully there will be uninterrupted play throughout the day. Let's remind you of how the match stands at the moment. When they went off for bad light last night, India were five for no loss, leaving them 94 runs behind England. Well, Chris Lewis will be one of the key players today and over the past few weeks here on Cricket Focus, Geoffrey Boycott has strongly voiced his opinion that Lewis should be back in the England side. Well, following a successful one-day series, he's back on the test scene. However, his first big test was to face our cameras. I grew up. I grew up in the West Indies, and people like Michael Holden, Andy Roberts, and Clive Lloyd, and Viv Richards were all playing. And I sort of, if anybody, I looked up to them, you know, because it was really the national sport in the West Indies. So all those guys, I think, were my heroes. I'd say over the last few years, I think certainly Brian Lara, not only because he's a, a great batter, he just has the ability to go on and on and on. Kirtley Ambrose, on his day, he's a, a very, 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 very mean customer. He doesn't give you any runs. Oh, beautifully bold. I think when I made my, my debut for England, that was on, I think, the tour in 1991 in Trinidad. I played in a one-day international. Although it was rained off, we only played half the game. I took a wicket. I think it was Desmond Haynes, and also took a catch. And it was just a a great day for me. To enjoy, I think sports as a whole, not just cricket, is a lot easier and I think you learn quicker when you're actually enjoying your sport. So, you know, when you put on a pair of pads or you've got a ball in your hand, go out there and have fun. Away from cricket, I just like to relax and have a laugh and I just like comedy. I think um, things like Blackadder, 
and all the things like not the nine o'clock news and that sort of thing makes me laugh and I listen to a lot of music, just about anything, jazz, funk, reggae, soul, everything. Chinese, a little bit of Thai, um, every now and then a bit of Indian, I think would have to be my favourite meals, uh, away from the, the obvious sort of West Indian dishes that I, I tend to have at home with my with my mum. I think for me uh, the biggest thrill was actually going to South Africa for the first time and really appreciating the beauty of the country. It is probably the most naturally beautiful country that I've actually ever been to. Wish him luck today. Well, England got about five minutes to go before play gets underway at Edgbaston. Let's now find out how the wicket has changed overnight. Here's Geoffrey Boycott's pitch report. Third morning of the Edgbaston test match. Nice sunshine, nice light breeze. We look at this pitch, how it's drying out quite nicely. Now, last night there was a lot of rain, early this morning as well. You'd expect quite a lot of sweating on this pitch. The tarpaulin's on, very much like uh, a polythene bag. You'd expect the pitch to sweat and some of these tufts of grass here to uh, liven up a bit, be a bit greener, but they aren't. They're quite dry. What is happening with the pitch? It's drying so well that you're getting lots of little cracks here. If you look at the edges of the cracks, you see how they're sort of disintegrating. When the ball hits the edges like that, then it will die, and that's why we're getting the uneven bounds. You see here, lots of little cracks. The edges are going like little jigsaws. The ball hits, there's no solidity, and it will die off the seamers. And here, we look at this one closely, a little bit of water's got on this. That's a little bit wet. So I think there's still a little bit in this pitch for the seamers, particularly with the new ball. First thing, if they bend the back, use the ball well, they can still create problems for the Indian batsmen. It's a question of whether you can hang in here, like Nasser Hussain did, work at your batting, then you can make runs. But I don't think any batsman will ever feel that he's totally in because the bounce will be a little bit uneven, a little bit of bounce off the tufty grass, a little bit of dying bounce off these cracks. So all in all, I think we've got a tough cricket match for both parties today. And certainly looking forward to today's play. Well, that pitch report was recorded just a few moments ago and Geoffrey has now raced up to the studio where he joins us now live on Cricket Focus. Morning, Geoffrey. Morning, Sue. Now, yesterday you were just a little bit scathing about India's uh, batting performance. What do you expect from them today? Well, I was very kind to them, I think, really, because they batted rubbish. <laughs> I mean, they showed no application. On this sort of surface, you can't go playing shots away from your body You've got to apply yourself, and above all, you've got to show a lot of concentration and patience. We saw how Nasser Hussain was right. He grafted really hard. When the bowling was tough, Prasad and Srinath bowled really well. He had to work hard. He couldn't play shots all around the pitch, but he had to hold his game together. And then when he got in and grafted hard for about 70, and he got the bowlers tired a bit, then he played his shots all around the pitch, played magnificently. And that's what the Indians have got to do. They just can't come in throwing the bat around, else they'll be all out today and it'll be over early tomorrow. Is that then a lack of form, Geoffrey, or is it is the fact that the pitch is, is playing a factor in this? No, it's a lack of thinking. This is a typically English result pitch. It's not a flat batting pitch. You're going to have to work very hard. It's going to be a low-scoring game. I don't think any batsman's ever going to feel that he's in and that it's easy. They're going to have to work jolly hard. They just didn't get the mind to it. They came in and battered like they do in India where the pitches are very flat, it's 100 degrees, the ball doesn't move much off the seam, the spinners do all the work. The spinners are not going to do much on this pitch, we're going to see very little spin, and if we do see spin, it's going to be very little successful spin. It's going to be the seamers that are going to put batsmen under pressure, moving the ball about a little bit off the tufty grass, a bit of uneven bounce, and you're going to have to work jolly hard with good technique, excellent concentration, a lot of patience, and you're going to have to be very selective with your shot playing. And it makes for a tight cricket match, a tense cricket match, and the Indians were just not up to it. When well, you say a, a seam attack, who do you expect to lead the England attack today? Cork. I think Cork, without a shadow of a doubt, is the best bowler. And I think all the England bowlers backed him up by being aggressive towards the Indians. I don't mean aggressive with their mouth, I mean aggressive with their bowling. They were always at the batsman, they didn't give him any respite, they didn't give him any peace. And unfortunately, the Indians did quite well with Srinath and Prasad, but unfortunately, their second string bowling wasn't very good. Cumbly's not bowling very well. He's straight down the leg side, he's straight down the offside, where usually he's a great test match bowler who bowls very tight, puts batsmen under pressure. And Mambri, 
Well, you saw he bowled 10 overs, that's all. They didn't have that much confidence in him. He bowls about medium pace, about my pace, little gentle outswingers, <laughs> which isn't very good. <laughs> OK, Geoffrey, thank you very much. Uh, we'll hear from you later.